Welcome to Geologic Time Scale, Absolute Dating, and Relative Dating, an EOG 8th grade review. Uh, my name is Mrs. Crom from Apple Valley Middle School. So, the Earth is approximately 4.5 billion years old, that's B with a, um, billion with a B, and that time scale has been divided into four eons, the Hadean, the Archean, the Proterozoic Eon, and the Phanerozoic Eon. These eons, however, are not evenly spaced, it's not just like every billion years is an eon, um, they are actually defined by major events. For instance, in the Hadean, um, Earth was molten rock turning into land. Then water came, and the first land masses started coming up through the water. Through volcanic activity, it was a fire and brimstone kind of time. Um, the Archean is when we had that first life. That was a single cell organism, bacteria, um, is the belief. Um, Proterozoic came later, well, that's when we actually got oxygen sustained in the atmosphere. Um, so the great oxygenation also kind of started and ended with some ice ages. Um, the Phanerozoic, that's what we're in right now, is defined by um, the beginning was the Cambrian explosion, which was this great diversification of life. It was not a real explosion, nothing caught on fire that we know of. Um, but that's when we started having this huge wide variety of life, which led to the vast life that we have today. So, evidence for the geologic time scale, there is, of course, absolute dating, where we are able to measure quantities of radioactive material to assign a numerical age to rocks and fossils. So, we can actually get a number from those things. Um, this is done by calculating the half-life of certain materials. So, half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of your parent material, so that's your starting radioactive material, to decay into daughter material. Um, these rates are constant for a given material, so this means um, that the time is, varies depending on the material. Some can be as quick as a few seconds or minutes. Um, and then others are 5,730 years for COM14 or uranium, 704 million years. There's others that are billions of years. So these really um, vary. Um, so to analyze your radiometric data, you have to understand that your parent material will... Pardon me? Oh, pardon me. Sorry, I apologize. Your parent material will decrease over time, and your daughter material will increase over time because your parent material is decaying and becoming your daughter material. Remember, again, the law of conservation of matter says nothing can be created or destroyed, so that parent material has to become something. It becomes that daughter material. And, of course, your parent material is going to equal your daughter material after one half-life because that's when one half of your parent material became one half the daughter material, and they're equal at that point. So then you can see in this graph, that's when those two things intersect. You can be able to calculate that by graphing the amounts that you have, and whenever they intersect, that's your half-life. Um, so applying this to EOG-style questioning, um, from any given amount, you should be able to tell how many half-lives it takes to have a percentage or a fraction of parent material remaining. Meaning if you, say, assign an amount of one, um, as your default of your original parent material. After one half life, you'll have a half. After two, you'll have a quarter. After three, you'll have an eighth. After four, you'll have a sixteenth, and so on and so forth. Um, the number of years can be found simply by if you are given, say, the amount um, of time one half life takes. After one half life, it'd be one times your half life. After two half lives, it'd be two times your half life. After three, it'd be three times your half life. For the example shown, is 5,700. So after one half life, you have one times 5,700. After two half lives, you have two times 5,700 or 11,400 after um, time has passed. After three half lives, you have three times 5,700, which is 17,100 years have passed. Um, you should also be able to calculate how long a half life is if you're given um, the amount of material that remains and the amount that you started with. Um, and an amount of time, and how much material remained provide the half-life of the material in number of years. So we did plenty of practice problems with that. You'd be able to find more and complete them as well. So there are limits to absolute dating. We can't just go around and just beep a device on things and say, well, this rock is exactly this old, um, because it doesn't work on every type of rock. It works best on igneous rocks. Remember, those are the types of rocks that are formed as a result of cooling magma, whether that's inside the earth or intrusive igneous rocks or outside the crust of the earth, like coming out of a volcano, that's going to be your extrusive igneous rocks as so they explode outside or they exit. Um, these are not the most common types of rock. The most common type of rock that we have on the planet are going to be sedimentary rocks, and yet those are the ones that are worst at being 
Um, absolute data. So many radioactive isotopes decay too quickly to be used on a geologic time scale. For instance, carbon-14 is relatively common, but that's such a short half-life of 5,700 years, roughly, that in geologic time, when you're looking about 4.5 billion years, and only one out of every carbon atom is a C14 atom, you suddenly start to get half and half and half and half. You have, don't have a measurable amount um, after a certain amount of time, about 80,000 years. So since it's a statistical process, there must be enough parent material remaining to get an accurate measurement. Recall when we were doing that half-life lab, flipping those pennies, some of you had one heads over and over and over and over again. And if you were just looking at, oh, it took me to go from one to a 100 to one penny, you didn't get a precise amount of half-lives with that. Um, it became less and less precise the fewer um, parent material you had. So how do you fill in those gaps with all of those problems? You have relative dating. This is where you compare rocks. So relatives, you're looking at relationships. You're comparing rocks to determine what's older, what's first, second, third. And you do that by the law of superposition. This means that older rocks are on the bottom and younger rocks are, of course, on the top. You can do this also using index fossils. Index fossils are fossils which have a wide geographic range over a short period of time. So if you analyze these four outcrops, you can see that the um, sample A occurs in one short period of time, but is common in every single outcrop. Therefore, that would be a great index fossil. The others, not so much. B is in too many periods of time. That's too many strata or rock layers. C is also in too many strata or rock layers. Um, D only occurs in one outcrop, so it's not common enough worldwide. Correlation dating is when you find the dates, the absolute date of any fossil, because most living organisms only live for a few million years. If you find that fossil, you know that any time you find it again, it's going to be that amount of times. So if I find a fossil I know it only lived 5 to 10 million years ago, any time I see it, I know that I am in a rock layer that is 5 to 10 million years old. Um, so that's correlation rock dating. This can really help you when there are things like erosion taking place in your strata, your rock layers, and you can figure out if you miss a period of time. So there are, of course, limitations to relative dating and um, index fossils. Fossils represent only 0.01% of life on Earth, um, so there are gaps. Relative dating does not assign a numerical value to rocks, and layers can't be missing due to erosion, meaning you're only going to get a partial story using these. So really the best method, of course, is a combination of relative and absolute dating, really give you that more full picture. Um, using just one of the others, like trying to see the world in just reds or just blues, when really you need red, blue, and yellow, you need all those primary colors and all the ways they mix together to see the complete picture. Because you can't radiometrically date all rocks, we need relative dating to give us a better picture of Earth's history. So this has been a short review of geologic time scale, absolute, and relative dating, an EOG review for 8th grade science. Thank you.